Here's something you don't see very often anymore either. It's a 1965 Porsche 904 Carrera GTS. This was when they entered the fiberglass era. They were amazing cars. You could drive them on the streets. This had their uh, Carrera engine, 4 cam engine, and lots of people raced these very successfully. But what was so nice is this car was one that you could drive on the street. So, for that reason alone, they're very popular. We're here today with Bill Noon, who brought this fantastic car. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Well, quite a bit. It uh, depends on what you want to really want to hear. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Porsche decided to go from racing alloy uh, space frame cars, like the 550 Spiders become very famous for. Uh, after about 10 years, they wanted to switch to something different. And they were fascinated by the idea of not spending a lot of money, uh, buying a kind of a tried and true proven method from somebody else rather than doing it in-house. In, in which was a big innovative change for Porsche. So they really admired Colin Chapman and Lotus. Uh, so they made a deal with them and they got a license agreement to be able to use a backbone chassis. So the car uses a spine chassis that runs down the middle of the car, uh, relatively flat, and it has a tuning fork front and rear connecting area for the front suspension and for mounting the motor, uh, mid-engine car. Um, the design was uh, very light, and they used an inner fiberglass body and an outer fiberglass body bonded together. It became a very rigid monocoque type structure, and uh, the car was very competitive, very successful. They were the last of the Porsches to run the famous 4-cam motor, and the final version was called the 587.3. I was making about 180 horsepower out of 2 liters, which is pretty potent for a little 2 liter car. Uh, they ran them for 63 and 64, very successfully. Started to get a little bit long in the tooth by 65. Uh, they also had learned a lot of things about the car. Number one, like most Lotuses, the Porsche had inherited, the idea was a little bit fragile and the chassis was kind of flexible. So starting um, very late in the program, they decided they had a couple to do a couple of important revisions. Um, and there were some remarkable and dramatic changes to the car. Uh, they don't look very different than the earlier ones, but they're really a very unique vehicle. So they went with a longer rear body work right. on it that slopes down and a much more pronounced cam tail. The fuel fill went from being on the right to the middle because now the cars are racing also in the States and other races where the fuel would be up from either side. And then the uh, another main change that took place was the fueling system. A little bit larger, more baffling, and then they vented the tank into a catch tank. The liquid fuel would go down in the catch tank, the, va vent, the uh, vapors would vent off, and then the liquid fuel would go back in the fuel tank, and they could run the car down to about 5 liters of fuel, versus having to run into about 30 liters of fuel before. So the longer you can stay out on the track, the more competitive you can be. Absolutely. Um, they revised the frame radically. They ran a secondary frame on either side. Right. So instead of just being a backbone frame, now it had out on either side of it. It added a little bit of weight to the car, but made it torsionally extremely rigid, and you were able to put the power down to the road a lot better, and the cars were wickedly competitive. However, at this point, time had caught up with the whole design, and the next season, of course, switched over to the 906. So this is the but second... This, this is the last, really, that you could drive on the street, because... You know, this is it's a crazy thing to think about this, but technically, all the way up until the 917 was still road legal. <laughs> the rest of the story. Bill, this is fantastic. Always a Thank pleasure. You. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very kindly.